With me now is the member of the Joint Select Committee or Super Committee, U.S. Senator Patrick Toobie, Republican of Pennsylvania. Good to see you again, Senator. Good to be here, Steve. So let's go over these mechanics again briefly. So you have this mission that by November 23rd or so you're supposed mm -hmm. to come up with something. Is that correct? Yeah. By November 23rd, we are supposed to attempt to come to an agreement that would be manifested by a, at least a simple majority of the 12. So it only takes seven of the 12 to get there. Uh, and if we can reach an agreement, then what's really extraordinary about this committee is that the, the product, the legislation, the bill that we would uh, agree to has to be voted on by both the House and the Senate. Can't be delayed, can't be obstructed, can't be amended. It's not Just subject to a vote. filibuster. Up or down vote. And that's unprecedented in, in the history of Congress, as far as I know, for a committee to have the ability to bypass everything else, enforce its legislative product directly to the floor. And some are saying, well, maybe you have to get it done sooner than that because the Congressional Budget yeah. Office wants to look at the numbers. Well, that's exactly right. Be before we've finished our work, it has to be uh, scored is the term they use. But basically, the, the official budget guys in Washington have to uh, quantify its impact on the deficit. And uh, that's a complex process, and it's often an iterative process. So they'll come up with a number. It'll be a little different than what we thought they were going to do. And mm -hmm. so we may make some changes. That kind of back and forth probably requires several weeks. So as a practical matter, we really probably need You're to in have... crunch time right I, now. I think, I think by the first week of November, we've got to be done, and we are absolutely in crunch time. And when you look at what you're crunching, I mentioned yeah. $1.2 trillion. Yeah. There are people that say, well, maybe it's $1.5. There are others, as Gang of 36 are being called, and others yeah. in America that are saying, hey, you've got an opportunity here. Don't do, do, just do $1.2 or $1.5. Do $4 trillion over yeah. 10 years. Yeah. Well, a couple of things. First of all, the government is projecting to spend over the next 10 years over 40 trillion dollars, trillion, right? Uh, about 45 trillion dollars. Uh, 1.2 trillion is less than 3% of that. So, you know, if a, a small business owner faced the kind of fiscal disaster that we're facing, uh, he or she would get up and cut 3% of their budget before their first cup of coffee in the morning and move on. This will not be so easy in Washington, but uh, yeah, I think 1.2 is the goal set by the legislation. I would love to do more than that. So you're open we to need, that idea? Oh, we need if to do the much more. Twelve of you sat around and said, "Hey, I think we can do more." than Well, that. I'll tell you, the twelve have have said publicly at, at public hearings. Uh, I think pretty much every one of us has probably said that it'd be better to do more. Uh, if if we do the 1.2, we will have met the statutory goal, and that'll be progress. But it's just the beginning of what we need to put our government on a sustainable fiscal path. Are tax cuts in this at all? In other words, are they on the table? Well, here's the thing that I think is important. Whatever we do has to do two things. One, it's got to reduce the deficit, and that is the immediate, explicit goal of the legislation. The other thing is it needs to be pro-growth. So where I think there's a great opportunity on the tax front is to reform this ridiculous tax code. Reform it in a way that'll generate more economic growth. More economic growth means more people working. And well, that's how much of a reform are we talking about? Are you talking about like a wholesale throw it out, go with Herm Cain's 999 plan? Pro probably can't do something that hasn't been thoroughly vetted mm -hmm. because we just don't have the time uh, to vet it ourselves. Uh, and, you know, something like Herman Cain's plan is very intriguing, but it, uh, it certainly hasn't had the kind of scrutiny that you need. But we definitely could, could simplify the code. And, and you know, all of the commissions that have looked at deficit reduction have called for this. And there's bipartisan support to some degree for simplifying the code, for broadening the base on which things would be taxed, lowering marginal rates so that you'd encourage economic growth. And I think we should do that on both the individual and the business side. So we're talking about, do you consider it within the responsibility or uh, the charge of your committee that you could go to present to Congress a bill that says by the way and we're reducing the corporate tax rate from 35 percent to X and we are closing loopholes for this this and this there's no question it is it is within the authority of the committee to do that if we can reach an agreement mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, and hold what about the, the other way the tax increase Say, for example, the president has called for yeah. at least one and a half trillion dollars in new taxes. Yeah. And is that something that will be discussed? Uh, well, um, it, it probably will be discussed. I, there is a, there's an understanding among the 12 members of the committee that we don't 
publicly disclose what's actually discussed privately among among the members. Um, so I won't get into you know whether that's been discussed. But just let me be very Could clear. Could it be discussed? Um, there's nothing about the legislation that precludes that, and there are some people who think that we should have a massive tax increase. I'm not among them. I think this would be a really uh, bad idea. I don't think the problem with our government and our country is that we're undertaxed. I think we've been overspending, and that's why we've gotten into this mess. So what I hope we'll do is we'll we'll curb the spending bring that under control or at least begin to steve we're certainly not going to solve this problem but we could make progress on it and i and again i'd like to see us reform the tax code in a way that's not a tax increase but designed to generate stronger economic growth well douglas elmendorf who's the director of the cbo um, has suggested that a immediate or near-term great reduction in spending would be adverse to the economy. Yeah. Um, I understand. I know he believes that, and, and he's not alone. Um, I disagree with this idea that we need the government to spend a whole lot of money um, because people aren't spending enough. You know, if, if that idea worked, then this mass, these massive deficits would, would presumably have us in good shape. We're running the biggest deficits we've ever run by far. And if that actually worked in practice, then I suppose Greece would have one of the strongest economies in Europe and they sure don't. So I think if we can actually limit our spending, demonstrate that we've got the political will to bring spending under control, I think this surge in confidence would encourage investment, a business expansion, and new hiring, and, and that's the direction we ought to be heading in. Uh, let me ask you this, though. You talked about getting a seven votes out of those 12. Right. What is the incentive, say, for a liberal Democrat who looks at, if we do nothing, the automatic cuts take effect in 2013, starting in January. The military budget will be cut $55 billion a year over 10 years, as I understand it. If, if they see that, and they know that Social Security and several other major entitlements right. won't be cut at all, What's their incentive to do anything? Because they would get their way. Um, there are some who might perceive that to be an acceptable outcome, uh, especially some on the far left, as you, as you mentioned. Although, keep in mind, about half of all of the projected cuts, if we fail to reach our goal and we go into this, what we call a sequestration, these automatic cuts, about half are in defense, about half are in non-security discretionary spending. And the people on the far left who are okay with massive cuts in, deficit, in, in defense, um, they tend to have a problem with some of these other areas. More with Senator Pat Toomey in a moment on NBC Tenet Issue and later a look at the 2012 races for President, Pennsylvania Attorney General and Congressional Contest ahead.